Okay, good morning everybody, welcome. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, ready for our coffee chat? Ta-da! Howdy, how is everyone? Hopefully you are all doing just fine and dandy. Fine and dandy. Just getting myself set up here. Whoops. So many buttons to press and things to think about. Where are we? Okay, I think this is us here. Maybe that's not it, no. How is everyone? You all good? Hopefully you've got some good questions to ask. Ah, oh, there we are. That makes more sense. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Morning, John. Morning, Teresa. Morning, Pauline. How are you? And good morning, Marie. Morning, Colin. Morning, Rosie. Morning, Tanya. Morning, Dawn. Dawn of a brand new day. And for everybody over in the uh, members area, <laughs> hearts for you this morning. Morning Sharon, morning Gail, morning Margaret, morning Sherry, morning Tatiana, morning Sajada, morning Janet, morning Jenny, morning Celine, good morning me. <laughs> Sajada loves the hearts, very good. It's nice that they've had that little function in. Morning Manju, morning Margaret in Gosford. G'day Gail, Gail says, wow, confetti and hearts. We feel really special. <laughs> and good morning to the other Gail in Geelong. Morning Becky, morning Sonia. Morning DM Dyer, Diane, oh okay, g'day Diane. Morning Fred, morning Magdalene. How are you in Tassie? Hope you're all good. Do, 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 do. Morning Nancy, morning Gally, Galena, I think it is. <laughs> Rosie said, I love the way you say as many names as you can. I try to acknowledge everybody. Sometimes it gets a bit hard, but um, yeah, I like to say hi to everyone because uh, I like to have you all in my world. Morning, Kay. Morning, Barb. Morning, Margot. All right. Well, I've got a couple of little things to talk to you about. Um, and one big announcement that I need your assistance with um, but let me just see if I can find I got a, a lovely email yesterday now this will hopefully be of interest to those of you who were um, considering selling your art maybe you're in the uh, in the artist business Academy etc and maybe you're not but you might be selling your art elsewhere um, you've probably heard me talking about how art isn't just paint and brush strokes and a canvas, right? Um, even though some people try to price their art that way. But art is actually emotion and feeling and evokes memories and it stirs up emotion within people. And I think we should always keep this in mind, right? Um, when we're creating a painting. We, you know, sometimes we're painting for ourselves, but if we're painting because we want to express ourselves out in the world, beyond ourselves, and we want to put our paintings and our creativity out in the world, we have to remember and keep in mind that somebody on the other end of, uh, you know, on the receiving end of our output um, is going to be impacted by that art, hopefully in a good way, right? That's our goal, of course, is that they will be impacted in a positive way. So um, anyway, I digress. I um, sold a painting a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I got this lovely email, and I'm not going to read all of it to you, uh, but she's written quite a, an extensive email. And basically her friends got together, and they bought this painting for her 40th birthday. And she's telling me the story of how that happened, right? But her comments really struck an accord with me and reaffirmed, because um, often some of the things that I say about selling art and so on, they're more of my intuitive feel. I don't have data or research to back up a lot of things, right? It's just from my experience and my intuition. And um, it's nice to get emails from people that without even probably even heard my views and opinions is reaffirming um, 
exactly what I, I've been telling you guys, right? So her friends got together and bought her this painting for her 40th birthday. Now, the painting itself was uh, an outback waterhole. In fact, if you're a member of the Learn to Paint Academy and you want to see the painting, it's um, one that I did as part of the uh, Loose Bold and Expressive course, right? So you can go and watch how I created that painting. Um, and uh, it's the one that's a, it's a portrait shape and it's the sort of cliff face with the water at the bottom. Okay, so her friends got together and bought that for her, got it framed and gave it to her for her 40th birthday. And she's commented that this painting re-energizes my spirits every time I look at it, particularly since I'm currently based in Sydney and grinding through the current lockdown. Although I can't have visitors, it's become the background to many Zoom meetings and received many compliments, right? Um, and then she goes on to say how, you know, it, it's a constant reminder to her of a time where she... Um, she had great memories of being in Outback Australia. Um, so, um, just trying to find the other comment that she made. Um, oh, she says, sort of in conclusion, don't mean to bore you with my life story, but I've spent so much time looking at this painting since I received it late July, and today I wanted to let you know how truly appreciated it is, right? Um, I hope... Yeah, um, thank you for the joy you've contributed in my life. I'll treasure it always. Now, I'm not reading any of that out just to say I wasn't Rod great or anything like that. That's not my intention. My intention is to express to you just how important what we do as artists is. It's not important to everyone, but we only need to find that one person that a particular painting resonates with them and touches their life and, and moves them emotionally in some way. Um, that's all we need, right? Each painting has somebody like that within the world of seven and a half billion people. There is somebody who's going to look at your painting um, and they're going to be moved emotionally by it. Somewhere in the world, seven and a half billion people. It's the greatest time in history to be an artist because we've got the tools today with the right strategy and a bit of knowledge to reach out around the world with our art and connect with people and to improve their life, right? Um, and to make a difference in their life. And you never know who that one person is and you know, what challenges they're going through right now or what um, obstacles are in front of them, how that piece of artwork could impact them. So um, keep that in the back of your mind, next painting you produce, and pour your heart and soul into your paintings because that energy you put into it is going to uh, flow out into the world, right, and impact other people. So don't just be robotic like in your painting you know don't just go through the motions because rod said oh we've got to do a value study and so i better do this week's assignment and post it so I'll, you know everyone sees that i'm doing something no no don't do that you know, paint paintings that are going to make your heart and soul sing pour all of your energy into it and then put it out into the world because that positive energy will have ripple effects around the world right anyway it's a bit philosophical isn't it um, which is what I like to talk about, actually. <laughs> we can talk about how to varnish your painting and how to prepare MDF boards if you want. But, um, g'day, Ron. Um, but I prefer to talk about deeper meaning of art sometimes as well. So that's all good. Okay, a couple of announcements. First one is I have been busy, busy, busy um, filming for the Brian Cook, last four paintings of Brian Cook. Um, here's the second project, so that's filmed, and the third project is currently in filming. Here's a sneak preview for you, okay, just got a little bit more work to do on that one today, uh, and then I'll start project four today, so what that means is, by Monday, Tuesday, the Brian Cook Pro, I had hoped to get it done this week, but you know. Um, by Monday, Tuesday, the Brian Cook last four painting projects of Brian Cook will be ready to go. So if you're currently a member, life member, monthly member, MCI, etc. In other words, you have a membership that gives you full access, then you'll get that course automatically. Um, and it's a ripper. You know, Brian impacted me and, and Ron, who's just joined us on our live stream, um, is, you know, have to thank, keep thanking Ron, not only for being just a beautiful human being, but... Um, but also uh, for hosting Brian's workshops. If it wasn't for that, I would never have met Brian, and his painting approach has had a big impact on my painting, right? So, um, um, what was I saying? 
Um, yeah, so if it wasn't for Brian, uh, he had a huge impact on my life. So just before Brian passed away, he and I were talking about him coming up here to Noosa and, um, and filming four painting projects. We we're going to turn them into DVDs and so on. Um, then uh, he passed away before we could do that. But he back and forward, we were emailing and discussing what would make a good painting project and so on. And um, we'd finalised the four painting projects and then COVID got in the way, delayed, and then he passed away. So he never got around to filming them. So I, I've tossed up in my mind, should I film them or not, or just let them be lost to history? And to me, they were too important. Um, even though they're simple little projects, they demonstrate beautifully what his process was. Um, so I decided to film them so that they weren't lost to history. At the very least, get to share them with our members in the Learn to Paint Academy. Um, I will make them a, for, available for sale if you're not a member of the Learn to Paint Academy um, for a brief period of time, for a couple of weeks. Um, but then they'll just be in our members area for those who become members. Uh, and I've really enjoyed filming them, you know. They're four fun little projects. If you can get the essence of these projects, you can pretty much go and paint anything. So... Um, look out for that. That's coming up next week. Um, so there's that. Then the other thing was... Oh, the Unleash the Artist Within number two, and also number one. All the recordings of those are now in the members area, so you can log in and uh, get access to that. Uh, I'm still working on the idea of painting with the Impressionists, um, and depending on lockdowns and things like that, um, we might kick that off in September maybe mid to late September. And we might run it for two weeks, six days each week. So that'll give us 12 sessions. And um, with those 12 sessions, we'll, we'll hopefully get through six Impressionist paintings and just try and learn and study the approach that they were taking. So that's coming up as well. Uh, the other thing that's coming up is i have now putting plans in place to write the art instruction book. Some of you may have seen my post on the Facebook page. Um, it'll be called The More Method of Painting. So I'm starting to really crank forward on that. Look out for a video on our Facebook page, Learn to Paint Academy, um, sometime today, where I'm going to ask you for your feedback about art instruction books. Right? I've got a huge collection of them. Well, not a huge collection, but I've got a collection of them. And I'm going to go through those and pick out the things I love and the things that maybe I'm not too sure and start to collate that information to build out the structure of the new book, right? Um, so I'd love to get your feedback on what your thoughts are. So we'll, um, we'll have a look at that as well. And I teased you guys a few days ago um, where I mentioned that I've got a huge announcement, which is so exciting. You guys are going to love it, <laughs> hopefully. Um, but I can't tell you what the announcement is just yet. What I can tell you is in order for the announce for what I'm going to announce and what we're going to do to evolve the Learn to Paint Academy to another level, um, I need to upgrade the server, right? The, the, the whole members area site is hosted on a server, computer, somewhere, I don't know, it's out there somewhere. I think it's in the US, yeah, Seattle from memory. So it's hosted on a server and in order for me to be able to upgrade the members area with what we're planning on doing, I need to upgrade the server. And what that means is um, I'm going to do that late today and over the weekend. So if you are a member of the Learn to Paint Academy, you can still log in. But please, when I, I'm going to put up a post in the activity stream. When you see that post, please don't post any more photos until you see me do the next post saying everything should be fine. Okay, Because um, if you do post during this period of a couple of days, um, your posts won't be carried onto the new server. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So sometime this afternoon, I'm going to put up a post in the activity stream of the members area. It's going to say, please don't post anything until further notice. So don't post photos, okay, um, because they'll disappear. When I repost to say everything's good, you can start posting again. Now, during that time, a couple of days, it's possible you may not be able to access the site at all intermittently for periods of time. Right. Um, if you can access, site, access the site, you can still go and watch the courses right, and the live stream replays and everything. You'll be able to access all of that, um, but, but just don't post anything. So that means in the challenges, in the um, video critiques, the masters and you know, the discussions, don't put any posts up. Just 
if you can access the site, you'll be able to still watch the videos. Does that sound fair enough to everybody? I know it's a, 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 an inconvenience for a couple of days, but when we upgrade the server, um, it'll enable us to then take what we're doing to a, a higher level. And I think you'll all be pretty excited about what we've got planned and what we've got coming up. So just let me know yes in the comments while I take a breath of air. <gasps> Shouldn't have done that. Um, and let me know if that's cool with you guys. We won't have to log in again. Well, you need to log in each time you access the site, Tracy. Um, well, you should need to anyway. If you're not, I'll have to look at that. No worries, John, thank you. Um, yeah, just let me know yes, if that's all good. Uh, Jill, um, the I did see the photo you sent and I didn't quite like the composition of it and didn't think it was quite what we'd need. So what I'm gonna do in the Painting with the Masters, um, sorry, Painting with the Impressionists course in September or so, I've got my eye on a Monet painting, which is a snow scene. Um, so that will probably be included as part of that. So you'll see how to do a snow scene. Um, really, snow is just shapes with edges, right? And a dark mid and light tone. So, but we'll, we'll look at that. And um, yeah, there's some good Monet painting that I like that, um, that uh, we will, um, include which has snow in it dawn says sounds good as this is why i couldn't happen any photos yeah there was an issue with the site last night as part of our tweaking uh, but that issue is fine now um, so that was the reason i did make a comment in the activity stream not to uh not to be alarmed by the fact that we there's a little technical issue there um all right cool Uh, thank you, Sonia, for that idea. I'm about to order, in fact, in terms of emergency art supplies, <laughs> I just got a delivery yesterday, rosemary brushes. So I've just ordered up a whole lot of fresh new brushes. These are the ones from our brush course. Um, and these are the new ones that I've ordered. I didn't quite like the dark, I prefer the light. So anyway, I've ordered a whole lot of new rosemary brushes. Um, I got a delivery a couple of days ago of a whole lot of gouache and um, I'm about to order a whole lot of oil paints today. So yeah, I agree with you. It's good to have more supplies than what you need, just in case, just in case. Okay. All right. Um, in terms of your weekly Rod Moore fix, subject to lockdowns, obviously if, if we're locked down, I can't come in here technically. Um, okay. Thank you all for your feedback on my little story. Do I get any leisure time? Painting's my leisure time. <laughs> Uh, look, I, um, I get really bored and I, I have a real sense of mission about what I'm doing and I kind of get bored if I'm, if I'm not keeping busy. So um, what size boards do you buy in order to not have wastage when you cut them to your sizes? Uh, well, Jenny, I get them pre-cut. Um, in fact, down near the Gold Coast, if you contact our support desk, I'll give you the name of the company I started using. And I got 300 of one size and 200 of another size, 25 by 35 and 20 by 35. And they pre-cut them perfectly to size. Um, and they were cheap as, MDF boards, right? So, um, yeah, I get them pre-cut. So there's a, somebody down near Logan, and you have to go to the factory and pick it up. In fact, I underestimated what 300 and 200, so 500 pieces of MDF board would look like. And they picked it up with a forklift and put it in the back of my four-wheel drive and the whole car, um, so you just gotta be careful. <laughs> Sherry says, I recently read that serious artists need the Arla Prima 2 textbook where from the recently departed Richard Schmidt. Are you familiar with that one? It's a bit pricey. Sherry, I have a copy of the uh, Arla Prima 2. I don't know if that it's, if you're, you know, it needs to be read as a serious artist. <laughs> I think that, um, 
an opinion from somebody, I'd say. Um, however, it's, uh, it's a good art book. I think there are better art instruction books than that one. Um, in fact, the video I'm going to do later on today is going to be about art instruction books. So look out for that on our Facebook page. And um, it's a good book. It's very heavy reading, I find, because uh, he, he thinks deeply about subjects. And it's probably not suited to an absolute beginner about to get started. It's too overwhelming. It's this thick. Um, I read it a couple of pages of it each morning when I'm having my morning coffee, right? It's a good book. It is uh, expensive, but it's an investment. Um, if you're a hobby artist, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, but if you have aspirations beyond just being a good hobby artist, then it's a worthwhile investment at some point. Um, would I prioritise it over other art books? Not necessarily. It depends on where you are in your journey. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd take the opinion with a grain of salt. I think opinions are... Um, well, they're opinions, yeah. <laughs> maybe for that particular person who's made that comment, maybe that was true for them. Celine said, I'm planning to order my first WMO paints other than simply getting the colours I want. Is there anything else I need to get started? No, you can just use it with straight water. Now, it depends on what brand you're buying. Um, if they have mediums like a thinning medium or a fast drying medium, might be worth getting that as well. Um, but initially, just water. In fact, I've got back to the point where, you know, yesterday we were working on this one as an advanced live stream, so an outback creek bed. And um, yeah, I've, oh, damn, I'm not using any mediums at all now with the water mixable oils. Um, yeah, you may have to ask them, Jenny, about delivery then, possibly, because you're in the Gold Coast, so it's not too far. Do I put canvas onto my boards, asked Foxy? Nope. Did it once. Not interested in doing it again, really. Um, it was just, yeah, I'm, I end up with bubbles and things in it. Um, Rosie says, if I wasn't a member, I would want to be. Good on you, Rosie. Mitch says, very disappointed we were going to the Australian Impressionist Exhibition in Melbourne. Yeah, I was also going to that. Um, I was meant to be there in May, I think it was. March or May. Um, and there was a second one in Melbourne happening at the same time, which was running till August. Oh, it was the Boston, the Boston Museum, all their Impressionist paintings were coming across. Okay. Margot says, just all good with that plan. Are those brushes for sale on the site? These brushes, the um, rosemary brushes? No, this is Rosemary & Co. Uh, they're handmade brushes in the UK. And um, I don't sell them. Um, I just buy them. They're probably the better end of uh, paint brushes. Um, so you just, just search for Rosemary & Co. paint brushes and you'll find them. They're, they're pretty well known. Jill says, you should be classified as an essential service for our mental health. Thank you, Jill. Don't know that I want to be responsible for a large number of people's mental health, to be, to be honest. <laughs> Some days I struggle with my own, but I appreciate the compliment. <laughs> I should be an essential service, yeah. I don't think the government takes too... Well, they've got some unusual views, haven't they? Cancel local sport for the kids, but let professional sport go on. I mean, that's just... Anyway... Kathy says, is there a certain kind of felt tip pen you prefer for sketching? Start it. Uh, not really, not really. I, I don't pay that much attention. Um, I have one here somewhere. If I was organized, I'd know where it was, but um, no, I, I don't have a preference. No, that's the short answer. We were using premium plywood in, we, okay, that's good, yeah. Uh, be interested to know how that goes after you gesso it up and so on. Which book? Everyone's got one. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, Rosie. Sorry. Good morning, Ro. Uh, good morning, Mary. How are you? All right. Where are we up to? Do I ever sleep? Asked Marie. I tried to. Last night didn't sleep very well. But hey, you know, I work nine, ten hours a day, six days a week, and get a lot done in that time. So um, I am being a tease, Pauline. Yes, because I, you know, the thing is, I have no idea if what I'm planning on doing will actually work or be any good. So I'll try it, <laughs> and if it works, I'll let you, you know. If it doesn't work, I'll say, ah, oh, that was a silly idea, and we'll just move on. No, it's going to be good. Don't worry. 
Da -da 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 -da. Like Christmas, absolutely. I love getting art supplies, Therese. Teresa. What book? I missed what you said. Okay. So um, I was going to write a book called The Art of Soul, um, but my wife talked me into, before I do that, put my energy into writing an art instruction book based around the Moore method of painting. So that I'm planning on starting to write that. Um, and before I start, I'm going to do a video about art instruction books and I'm going to ask you for your feedback. It'll be up on the Learn to Paint Academy Facebook page. Um, so I will, um, I will let you know. What time today, Rod? Asked Jenny. Probably from midday onwards. So if you've got any photos to post into the Learn to Paint Academy members area, you've got basically two and a half hours left to post them before I put up that notice. Um, I have never seen an art instruction book, so yours will be the first. Oh, that's interesting. Um, definitely worth getting them. I'll, I'll show you some of the ones that I have in my collection and which ones I like. Rods will be the best. Well, thank you for the vote of confidence, Linda. Um, appreciate that. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da -da -da. Do you ever use any other white than titanium white? No, I never do. Um, only ever use titanium white. Don't know why, but um, that's just what I've always done. Jenny said, I've ordered some from Rosemary and Company. How long did it take for you to deliver? About five to 10 days, somewhere in that time frame. I forget, I'll just order it and then do other things and I completely forgot that I even ordered them, to be honest. So, um, And then they turned up, so. <laughs> So Jada said, just bought the book, Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting. Fantastic. So a couple of the books that I've recommended, like Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting, um, the Edgar Payne book on composition. You know, those books were written 80 years ago, maybe longer, what we, maybe even 100 years ago for the Carlson book, possibly. I'll have to go back and check. Um, and they're good books. I find some of the language a bit wordy and a bit heavy. Um, so that, you know... Um, yeah, so trying to put it into more modern language would be would be good. Uh, Jenny, no, I put more than one coat. You, you want to go into the members area, Jenny, and go to the Art Studio Chats course, and there's a whole video there on how I prepare boards. So, um, you know, you need more than one coat, absolutely. Caroline says, we haven't had sport for so long. Yeah, we, Queensland seems to be operating under a different program. The one you read a few pages a day of. Oh, that's the Arla, um, Arla Prima 2 by Richard Schmidt. It's a thick book. Uh, Caroline, I didn't end up picking a cover. Uh, and I did, I did mention to everyone, I think maybe on Wednesday's live stream, um, that I um, I appreciated everyone's feedback. The uh, For every book cover, I have people absolutely love and absolutely hate and everything in between. So I was none the wiser on any one of the covers. And to be honest, when I because there was about 90 odd or maybe even 100 covers that were designed as part of this competition. And when I went back and looked at them all, I thought none of them really hit the mark of what I wanted. And then in discussing it with my wife, she said, why are you trying to write that book? when you should be writing a book about the more method of painting first. And we talked about it for a few hours, um, my, my wife being far smarter than I. Um, I think she was right, you know? We've arrived at a place with the more method of painting now that we've had thousands of people learn to paint with it and we've got plenty of evidence. So, um, so yeah, so I basically said no to all those book covers for The Art of Soul and I'm now putting my focus on to the more method of painting uh, as a book, art instruction book. Gail says, I have quite a few art instruction books, but find I prefer online learning. It motivates me more. I like both. I like to sit out by the pool on a sunny day with a book and a cup of tea. I don't drink tea, so it's probably more like with coffee <laughs> or a smoothie. But yeah, I, I like to have a physical book. But I like DVDs, online courses. I like probably every way of learning. But I'm glad to hear you like online learning, Gail, because um, you know five years ago, People weren't that keen. A lot of people in art, artists, um, 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 you know, 
online learning wasn't that popular with artists five years ago, 10 years ago, very uninterested. <laughs> it's amazing I'm still doing it. Morning, Diana. Callum said, yeah, it confuses you the more opinions you have. Yeah, it taught me a lesson, actually. It taught me that there's a huge variety of lessons out there. Uh, sorry, a huge variety of opinions out there. And you have to have discernment in whose opinion you take on board, including mine, right? If you're learning to paint, don't just take my opinion on board. Um, you need to learn to, to have discernment about which opinions are valid and which ones aren't. Um, what was the reason you couldn't make a decision you were going to write the book, write the wrong book at this time? I don't know if it's the wrong book, but I think there's an order and sequence to things. And um, you know, at the moment, um, at the moment, um, that book was going to be more of a book based on my views around spirituality and creativity and how that impacts the artist, right? And how do you tap into a level of creativity beyond our own? you know, physical being. So it was a book about spirituality and the artist. Um, and so that's, that's sort of a, off on a tangent to what we do here in the Learn to Paint Academy. And um, it makes more sense on a logical progression, you know, linear progression of development that I um, document everything we talk about in our videos and live streams in the format of a book. So my, I think I agree my wife was... Uh, um, Oh, okay, I, I think I misread. Well, that was the reason you couldn't make a decision. You are going to write the wrong book. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're correct there, Jenny. I, I, and I, I wouldn't perhaps agree with the wrong book. I think it's the right book. It's just the wrong timing for that book. It's a book I'm, you know, I've written a third of it already, and I'm very committed to uh, publishing it at, you know, down the track, but I've still got work to do with the Learn to Paint Academy first. Yeah, yeah, cool. Thanks, Jenny. Um, yeah, so... Where are we? <laughs> Caroline says, I like to have a book instead of looking at the screen. Yeah, I, I tried to use Kindle books, you know, and, and read books on a, on a tablet and my phone, and I hated it. I like to hold a book and get a pen and underline it and put stars next to things. And um, yes, yeah, so I've gone back to physical books. Um, where are we? Um, good morning, Darlene. How are you? Uh, Sue is a very smart lady. Well, she is. She is. She's a very smart lady. Um, if you haven't met my wife, Sue, and you're a member of the Learn to Paint Academy, if you go into, there's a course called Yes, You Can Paint TV. That's one of our TV shows that Sue and I put together 10 years ago. And she does little travel segments um, in, in, the, in those videos. So worth checking out if you want to, She's got long hair today. Her hair is really long. And in there, she had it like a bob. But um, that was an interesting experience, making a TV. Well, was a, that was the second TV show we made, um, 12 episodes of each. And uh, it was interesting doing it with a uh, significant other. Pauline says, do you have any tips for my first trip with Plain Air Easel? Not sure what to expect. Um, Pauline, start in your backyard. I'll tell you the story. The very first day I went out plein air painting, um, you see, I'd, I'd come up with this idea, we're going to make a TV show. It's going to be called Plain Air Painting. And, um, <laughs> pardon me. Um, I have to laugh today, you know, talking about putting the cart before the horse. So I'd never been plein air painting, but I'd heard about it happening in America, right? It was growing in popularity. And, and, I'd, and I'd been looking at Bob Ross thinking, if I want to build an income or a career, a business out of art, teaching is probably the better way to go. Looking at Bob Ross, he had a TV show. I should get a TV show, right? The arrogance of it. But then through a series of divine intervention or coincidence, you know, things coinciding, within a month of that thought, you know, we had a, um, an agreement in place with a uh, TV station in Melbourne and we were producing a TV show. And the TV show happened to be about plain air painting, right? So a couple of weeks before we started filming the uh, pilot, I thought I'd better get out and do some plain air painting. I'd never done it before, right? And I had this spot in mind, it was a river in Geelong, and I thought there'd be no one there. Not a, it, was, it was like a big paddock and a river and some trees. And I thought that'd be perfect. I'll go and hide under the trees and paint the river, right? And so nobody ever went to this paddock and this river, ever, right? So down I go at 7 o'clock in the morning on a, on a Sunday morning, 
and I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. There was a thousand cars there. They, were, they had some bloody cross-country running event. I thought, oh, how annoying is that? There's no way in the world I'm going to set up here and try and do a painting amongst all this chaos. Um, where can I go, right? So I was living in Geelong, and I thought, I'll go down to Torquay, which is 20 or 30 minutes away from Geelong. So down I drive. There's people everywhere at the beaches, and I'm like, oh, God, I can't stand this, right? Because uh, I was nervous. I'd never been playing air painting before. Um, so then I end up in Anglesey, which is, but not just the main beach of Anglesey, one of the side beaches in Anglesey down this dirt road. And I thought, nobody will ever see me here. And I found some trees in the shade and I hit it up. And within five minutes, I had people coming up to me. Oh, what are you doing? And, you know, anyway, it turned out it was a disaster. So my number one tip would be start in your backyard. <laughs> just do a few little paintings in your backyard first. And then the other tip I'd suggest is find out if your local art society or group um, find out if they have a plain air group that you can go of other people because you'll feel so much better about doing it with other people and then um, have fun with it don't get frustrated it's, it's far more challenging to paint on location than in the studio just accept that and have fun and, and uh, keep at it don't quit it but good on you Pauline for trying it morning Julie thank you Carolyn uh, John do you ever tone your painting service number for example um, I have done a couple of times John but I haven't found any significant advantage with it what I tend to do more this is from our advanced live stream and um, you know basically I'm still making sure my composition is right with this and so I scrub in tone um, just to see whether the composition is going to hang together so I tend to do that more um, than actually tone the surface um, I find it gets all a bit dark sometimes I'll put a warm tone but yeah not much Carolyn said, I think your art should be on the key. Yes, I agree, Dawn. Morning, Kathy. I'm keen to read both, says Linda. Cool. Kathy likes paper as well. I've been busy. I'm always busy, Teresa. <laughs> uh, morning, Dorinda. So, yeah, that's, um, that's my plain air painting story. Gail says, I've tried quite a few online art instruction programs, but I prefer yours because you have so many live stream events. Most of the programs have fewer live streams. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting feedback. Um, I'm a member of quite a few online academies and so on. And one of them, fantastic artist who I admire greatly. I was watching the other day. And um, I guess one of the things that I like about what we do is we simplify the process right down. Um, I was watching this brilliant artist right um, in Florence and he's doing what I call step one the drawing but it took him an hour and a half nearly two hours to get the drawing in and um, he kept moving all the lines so what he ended up with was what this canvas with just lines everywhere right and I'm, and I'm like which is the one he's going to use and I found it really confusing um, so I like the way we keep things simple and have, have a structured process um, not sure why that's happening, Caroline. Hopefully it's good for everyone else. Gail says, I read fiction on my Kindle. No, I still like fiction books in physical. Gil, Jill says, I need help with blending acrylics, dark colours and blocks in sky. How do I overlap them so they blend into each other? Well, if the problem is because they're drying, then what I've found through doing workshops in here and other places is that most people who use acrylics don't use enough paint. They don't squeeze enough paint out, they don't mix enough paint, and they don't scoop up enough paint. So by the time they put a very thin amount of paint up on the canvas, it's soaked into the canvas and they can't blend, and then it starts to dry. So two things, use a lot more paint than what you're currently using. I'd say it will fix the problem automatically. Um, and the other thing is paint a little bit faster, but if you're still having problems after those two, use some retarder in the sky. Just a little, you know, need a tiny little bit, mix it in with the mix, and it will keep it wetter for longer. Or use the Artillia Interactive, have a little squirty bottle, and you can rehydrate them, and then you'll be able to blend them. Um, we could do it as a group and have the live stream running the plain air. It's a possibility. Um, with the camera I've got upstairs, we might be able to pull that off. I might need somebody to uh, assist, though, but we might do that. Morning Merrill, morning question. Can I finish off a dry traditional oil painting with water mixed oils? 
Uh, can't see why not. Can't see why not. You might need to use a little bit of linseed oil over the top if it's too dry. <laughs> um, my husband once had a brilliant idea, plein air painting for me at Pennsylvania Waterfall, dragged my stuff quite a ways in, set up at the falls, first time, very embarrassing for me, but I didn't want to hurt my husband's feelings, so my paintings were meh. They will be when you start plein air painting anyway, it's um, challenging, but people all stopped and commented very kindly. Yes, uh, that happens. Um, people usually are pretty encouraging. Um, I've sold a lot of paintings straight off the easel um, doing it. And uh, I highly encourage people to have a go at painting from life. Um, next week I've, I've got some mates coming uh, and we're going to go and paint on the beach, which will be nice. Marie says, do you ever paint with watercolour and do you give watercolour tu tutorials? We have two courses on watercolour, Marie, in the Learn to Paint Academy. One is a real basic introduction and one is more like a pen and wash type of uh, approach. Um, and I, I've concentrated on gouache, acrylic and oils because the more method of painting works for all those. With watercolour, you need to reverse it. So... Uh, rather than confuse people, I've just stuck with the um, the other mediums. But I do like watercolor. I started with watercolor, and lost all my hair. You know, like, ah, frustration. So um, I'd like to get back to watercolor. <laughs> Good on you, Valerie. Uh, yeah, Dorinda said live video interrupted. That's going to happen. It's an imperfect science live streaming, so we do our best, and. Um, Hopefully we can get through it okay. Jenny said, online learning for me last year was my saving grace during lockdown. I've learnt so much and feel much more confident. Good on you, Jenny. I think a few people would agree with you on that regard. Janet says, I've worked through this pandemic and Learn to Paint Academy has been my place to relax and get away from all the stress. Very good, Janet. I'm glad that's helped. Uh, Tatiana, Rod, can you can include your philosophical thoughts in your book? Um, I could, but it might distract people from the core message. I think that they, they need different uh, conversations, I think. Um, but I appreciate the idea, Tatiana. Manju said, hoping to attend Beyond Monet, the immersive experience. Oh, that sounds pretty cool. In Toronto, a massive exhibit dedicated to Claude. Sounds fab. Let us know how you go with that, Manju. It's in Ottawa now. So anybody in Ottawa, get out and see it because we all love Claude. And if you're in Toronto, get excited because it's coming your way. Jenny said, Rob, where do you find the live stream recording of the Advanced live stream? I'm still finding my way around. Okay, so um, there's if you go to the courses section, there's a course called live stream recordings. Um, you can either use the search bar and just type in live or you can scroll through the pages. There's about three pages of courses. So you'll find it in there and then just open up the 2021 August. Um, Margaret says, Kindle's good for taking into hospital. Yes, that's true. Janet says, your tip yesterday to write in the area was very helpful. That was on our advanced live stream. And uh, because it was a bit of a confusing uh, composition, I had this like a little bit of area for water, some rocks, and I was actually making some notation in there so that we knew what we were doing. So I'm glad that helped. It's not my idea, that's Miki Senkarik. I see her do that all the time. Foxy's painting in watercolor, it's good. Um, okay, any other questions? Um, morning Nana Marg. Off to golf, sounds good. Enjoy that. Diana said my stream keeps freezing too. Yep, can't really figure out why that happens. You know, when you think about the uh, what's involved technology-wise, it's a miracle we can do it at all. What are the advantages of pioneer painting in a group? Purely for comfort, I think. Um, you get over yourself after you've been out and plein air painted for a while, and then it doesn't bother you with people coming up and looking at what you're doing and so on. Um, so you get, you get used to it. So over a time, you know, it doesn't matter. But some people prefer um, just the comfort of being around other artists, you know, and the, a bit of a camaraderie and all that. So that's the only advantage I can see. There was an artist in um, the UK called Trevor Chamberlain, fantastic watercolour artist. 
and he didn't like people getting crowding around behind him, right? So he, because it was watercolor, he'd get a big moppy brush and he'd just get it in the water and then he'd start flicking it, you know, like he was trying to dry it off. And that soon moved people back out of the way. I don't know if that's very user friendly. Um, I've seen artists who, who get these t-shirts made up because they get sick of ask, being asked the same questions all the time. And um, you know, on the t-shirt it says, yes, I'm an artist, and yes, I'm painting the beach, and yes, I'm sure your grandmother's a great artist too. You know, and it, to me, that's a little bit sort of cynical. And um, I, I highly recommend don't doing that. Be open and friendly because I've sold lots of paintings um, off of the easel because people just get fascinated, right? But that's not gonna happen if you're hostile. And um, because I'm an introvert, I, I can sometimes come across as being a little bit hostile towards people. I've had to really work hard at being warm and more open. Um, but, you know, it's, um, you'll sell paintings if you're out there doing it regularly. Um, so that's the advantage of plein air painting in a group is just having some company and it's a bit more comfortable for people. All right. Looking forward to the art philosophy book. Cool. Well, another year or two. Um, okay, where are we up to here? Uh, Valerie, did you decide on the book cover? Um, Valerie, I've just I've spent a fair bit of time uh, just re reflecting on that. No, I decided not to go with any of them, um, but you can watch the replay to find out the reasons why and so on. Um, Dorinda said, I loved yesterday's live stream. Can't wait to have a go. Cool. Yeah, we've still got quite a bit of work to go. I mean, I'm still treating this as step one, the drawing step. Even So this is an advanced project. Um, really just trying to map out the composition first. So Linda says, my husband think that we can put primer instead of gesso on MDF board. What do you think? Um, well, I don't know. Give it a go. Um, I use house primer for, for the first coat on the front and back, and then I put two coats of gesso. And that works for me. Um, I'm not sure whether oil paint or acrylic will bind to house primer. It may, but I'm not an expert in the chemistry of it. So all I can suggest is give it a go his way, give it a go the other way, see which result you like better. Um, Caroline said, did some later on in a small group in Beckham. <laughs> Do you envisage the Moore Method book being published? So my first step with the Moore Method book um, is going to be put together a proposal, book proposal, and submit it to, there's a handful of publishers that specialize in art instruction books. There's maybe half a dozen, right? So I will submit a proposal to them, each of them, and, and pursue that angle um, for the you know, period of time. If I don't get a positive result, um, then I'll self-publish. And if I decide to self-publish, what I'll do is I'll set up what's called a Kickstarter program um, to raise the funding to self-publish. Uh, but I'll make sure that there are some incredible incentives for you to get involved um, in, in that fundraising process. Um, so there's a couple of options, one way or the other, you know, it'll, it'll be published. Uh, it's just a question of whether I find interest with one of the publishers who do publish art instruction books. Um, if you know if they're, if they're not publishing art instruction books, then they're not going to be interested because it's pretty specialised. That sounds like a good idea, Jill. Hosting plein air painting groups. Gail says I was terrified the first time I painted in public, but discovered it didn't bother me. Yeah, I was like that the first half dozen times. I was terrified, and then over time you, you sort of lose interest in being terrified. Dawn said I've chickened plein air so far if someone asks me what I'm doing I have to tell them I have no idea well in the big picture of things probably we, none of us have really any idea only Barbara gesso is thicker yeah it is depending on which brand of gesso you buy some of them are pretty thin but um, if you buy artisan brand they're quite thick g'day Colin love that advanced live stream yesterday went to Google Earth to suss out any dry creeks in the Flinders Fantastic, Colin. Um, I've got plenty of other photos of, along that creek bed, so um, I'll try and put some up in the members area. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> uh, you flicking the brush made me laugh, yeah? That's not me, that's Trevor Chamberlain. I can't claim that one. 
Uh, Janet, how do you deal with insects getting into the paint and canvas? Well, it's a good question, Janet, when you're plain air painting. Um, I'll never forget going into the National Gallery in London. I think it's in Trafalgar Square there. They've got a Monet painting that he did on the beach. And if you look closely, there's all sand in it. So clearly it's blown off the easel. It's only a smallish one for Monet. Um, and he's obviously tried to get as much sand off as he could, but there's sand all through the painting, right? And um, that gave me a lot of heart and made me think, you know, don't stress so much about things, Rod. If Monet can leave sand and it ends up in the National Gallery. Um, so, yeah, insects are going to get in your oil paint. Um, I'll just flick them out with a palette knife if I can, but I've sold plenty of paintings with uh, bugs and insects and dirt and twigs and sand in them. And look, lots of things are going to happen when you go out plein air painting um, that are unavoidable because you're out in the elements, right? Um, I've had my easel blow over and just take off. In fact, the very first episode we were filming of plein air painting TV. So I'd only been out plein air painting once or twice before. We started filming and we we're on the beach down at, where was it? Not Queenscliff, Ocean Grove? No, somewhere around there, Morning, uh, the Ballerine Peninsula in Geelong. And, um, and I didn't know a lot about plein air painting, to be honest, I just had a lot of enthusiasm. And I had this big backboard and it was blowing a gale. And I turned my back to the camera to talk to the camera and this gust of wind coming straight off the Antarctic um, picked up my, got caught in the, in the big backboard and it blew everything down the beach. And there's this outtake video of me running down the beach trying to catch up to, to everything. Um, so things like that are gonna happen. And you can only learn what to do via experience. Um, the other thing that uh, happened, you know, I did this fantastic painting down the Great Ocean Road one time. And as I was carrying it back, I was holding it like if, if that's the, the MDF board, I was holding it like that, right? And, um, and I had to sort of squeeze my way through a hold of overhanging foliage, but I had the wet paint out that way. And as I went past the foliage, it just wiped the entire painting pretty much off. <laughs> I had another friend who his entire easel and everything blew off a cliff down into, the, you know, so things like that are gonna happen. It's all part of the fun. Cheers, Jenny. Um, it's all part of the fun. When do I plan to have another Unleashed Challenge? Probably not until January, uh, which we'll do as a you know New Year kickstart your painting kind of approach. But we will be doing. Um, so the, the Unleash the Artist within is designed for everybody. So you don't have to be a member. You can do it for free um, while we're doing the lives. Um, so I'll do two or, two or three of those a year maybe. So the next one we'll probably do in um, January. But what we will do is the, uh, the next sort of like live painting, we'll call it a workshop, will be the painting with the Impressionists. Um, and at this stage it's looking like mid to late September to kick that off over a couple of weeks. So that'll be available for all of our members um, to come and do, uh, but we'll make it available for purchase as well if you're not a member. So um, that will be the plan with that. So stay tuned for more details. First of all, though, the Brian Cook program we have to put out. All right. Um. <coughs> Maybe we need a bloopers session. Yeah, I don't know where those tapes are these days, but I'm sure it wouldn't be pretty. Cheers, Foxy. All right, friends. Well, we might wrap it up there. Um, too carried away with details, Midge. Yes, most artists who are starting out, I think, get carried away with details. Um, you can't fix a painting that's not working with details. That's what I always say. So you want to focus 80 to 90% of your attention on getting the basics right. That's why, you know, the whole session yesterday, um, I really, this is all still step one of the more method of painting, you know, even though I've, it's a bit more of an advanced approach to what we normally teach. Um, but we did the whole session, me just playing around with the composition, getting darks and lights and so on. Make sure that composition's right first, because if I take off with a painting that's got a bad design composition, there's no amount of detail at the end that's going to fix it. Same with values and same with colour. So, um, yes, I'm glad you've had that realisation, Mitch. 
G'day, Patsy in Ohio. Cheers, Colleen. Um, so just a reminder, I'm still hopeful one day the world will open up and we will do a workshop and we can paint in France. Okay, cool. I'm not that keen on going to France given their current um, laws that they're implementing, but who knows what happens in the future. Um, just a reminder that from about midday today, my time, which is going to be in two hours, I'm going to put up a post in the members area asking you not to post anything until further notice. Um, because I'm going to be upgrading the server, um, which will benefit everybody once it's upgraded. So from midday f today through to maybe next Monday morning, um, you may experience some challenges logging into your account um, because we're upgrading the server. Now, if that happens, please don't contact our support desk. We're aware of the issue because we're going to create the issue, right? So there, some of you, not everyone, may experience challenges logging in. Um, if you are able to log in, please don't post anything until you see another notice from me saying it's okay to post. But you can, if you are, are able to log in, you can still watch the recorded videos, okay? So just be uh, mindful, I appreciate your help with that. I know it's an inconvenience for a few days, but the benefit of it with a faster server and what we've got planned coming up is going to um, far outweigh a couple of days of inconvenience. Remember, most of you are life members anyway, so um, until one of us croaks, <laughs> falls off the perch, um, you'll have ongoing access. So. Um, and I'm pretty excited about what we're going to do with the site once we do the server upgrade. So just asking for everyone's help and patience. Some of you may experience longer delays. Um, so, you know, we'll just work through that as best we can. But please don't inundate our support desk if you can't log in or you're having issues, okay? Because um, that'll only slow the process down um, if we have to respond to lots of support queries. So just know there's gonna be issues for a few days. And when I think the site is settled down, I'll do another post in the activity stream. Um, so asking for your help with that one. All right, but it will be exciting what we're gonna do once we get the server upgraded. And um, that wraps up our coffee chat and Q&A for this week. Thank you all so much for joining us. Have a fantastic day and weekend and um, happy painting, right? And uh, for those of you who are contemplating plein air painting, just grab your sketchbook and a pencil 